So I came into drug-resistant infections from a policy background. So I was working in the Department of Health in the UK, working on public health issues. Um, and then I moved to work with Lord Jim O'Neill on his review on AMR, which was set up by the UK Prime Minister a few years ago. Um, then once that was complete, I recently moved to the Wellcome Trust um, to lead some of the activities on, on policy and advocacy um, that are part of our major um, uh, five-year um, programme on drug-resistant infections. I think you can look at it two ways. Firstly, I think we rely on antibiotics for so many treatments that we take for granted. They make operations safe that we kind of take as being very routine. They make treatments like cancer therapies um, much safer, much more reliable. And they can treat kind of common infections that might have been a real concern for our, our grandparents' generation. So at that individual level, we should take it seriously. We should recognise that, that drug resistance really undermines that and could cause real problems in terms of how we can treat those sorts of things. At a big, at a global level, when we're talking, talking to policymakers, I think it's important to try and explain to them this is really um, on, a, on a scale which threatens global development and threatens global prosperity. Um, the O'Neill Review um, did some modelling that showed that we could be looking at 10 million people dying each year by 2050 and we could look at um, uh, a loss to the global economy of $100 trillion um, over that time. So this is really something which threatens global prosperity, threatens development and, and needs to be taken seriously by the global community. So we've known about the problems of drug resistance since Alexander Fleming first discovered penicillin nearly, 80, nearly 90 years ago. Um, so the scientific and the medical community have always known that there were dangers of drug resistance rising and, and antibiotics losing their effectiveness. But it was only in the past few years when we started to define the problem and the scale of the problem in terms of the global economic impact that we started to get prime ministers and presidents and finance ministers around the world to take notice. And I think it's only by having done that and by having started to explain the problem in these new terms and really make the problem accessible to a much wider audience, both in the public and amongst policymakers, that's really been key to, to helping the issue break out and, and really start getting the attention it deserves. I think it's absolutely vital. We need to make better use of antibiotics than we have done uh, for previous generations. And misuse and overuse of antibiotics is pervasive in all parts of the world, at all income levels, um, and in human, human use as well as in agriculture. So it's a real problem, and I think it's only by addressing these things and really starting to understand how doctors prescribe antibiotics and how patients seek them out um, that we're really going to be able to um, find more sustainable ways to reduce the overuse and to preserve current and new drugs for the future. But it's a complex thing. Um, people's behaviours around health is always a, a, a tricky area to properly understand. We need to do more than just raise awareness amongst the public of a problem. We need to explain to them actually why they may not need antibiotics, why they can maybe listen to their doctor or their pharmacist about what the alternatives might be to being given antibiotics. And then we need to help doctors to have that conversation, help them guide patients to um, understanding about drug resistance and, and what ant antibiotics can and can't do, and help them to make better decisions, for instance by using diagnostics, um, to work out when antibiotics may not actually be needed. Exactly, it's about getting to the root of the behaviour change, it's about understanding um, people's relationship with antibiotics, so that it's more than just a, a medicine for some people, there's always kind of complex things around people um, understanding their illness and, and wanting to find some way to be cured, and I think antibiotics 
hold a very special place in people's hearts. People think of them as being really important drugs that, that validate that, that they're ill and kind of provide a, a remedy for, for how they're feeling. It may not always be the best, best thing they need, but we need to understand those behaviours and those understandings. Uh, I think in, in terms of the, um, uh, the challenges of overcoming antimicrobial resistance is that we need to be taking action on so many different fronts. Um, so the Jim O'Neill's recommendations when they came out two years ago, they had a 10 point plan that's 10 different areas where we need to be taking action. So trying to address all of those things across human health, animal health and the environment in all sorts of different ways and, and across the global community is going to be really challenging. We need to be engaging different sectors of society, we need to be engaging companies, um, farmers and patients to really try and kind of find coordinated, um, harmonised responses to these problems. Exactly. This isn't a question of blaming uh, different sectors for causing a problem. This is about recognising that this is ev the antibiotics are everyone's resource and the problems of drug resistance will be felt across all different sectors. So we need to be taking steps in human medicine. We need to be looking at how we can improve how antibiotics are used in agriculture so we're not, um, we're not promoting wasteful or unnecessary use. And then the environment, as you say, it's often a, for a forgotten part of the equation. Um, the problems of um, pollution into waterways of antibiotics um, or, or the use of, um, of antibiotics, for instance, in growing plants and, and, um, and fruits and vegetables. That's an important area that is often kind of forgotten about and we need to do more to understand the problems there and understand the solutions that are needed. I think it's absolutely vital to coordinate our efforts across borders. Like you say, the, um, the bugs respect no borders, no boundaries, so we need to um, address them and challenge them in a truly joined up way. We need to ensure that given that we have scarce resources and that this is a big challenge, that countries are pulling together and doing things in a, in a harmonised way. And we need to ensure that actually we're recognising the needs and the challenges faced by countries at all different income levels. So this isn't just about high income countries finding solutions, this is about finding things that work for low and middle income countries as well, where we know there are problems with drug resistance, but we know there are also problems with lack of access to antibiotics. So trying to marry those different problems and the, the different needs and different capabilities of different countries is so important in how we tackle this problem. Thank you.